how's everybody's day been? <laughs> Good. How has yours been? It was all right. Um, what 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 you get into? Um, I just like finished up schoolwork and went to work. Um, where do you go to school? A school in Ohio. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. It's pretty rad. I can check. <laughs> and Eric, where are you? Uh oh, we can't hear Eric. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, uh, you're you're working now. Hello. It's it, yeah, it's, it's good now. Hey guys. Right now, right now I'm in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm usually I'm from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Cool. Which is where Brian's from. Oh wow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. I actually cool. met met Eric at a Columbus show on. Oh wow, that's DC. cool. You're just up as Four Red Island Rivers too. <laughs> yeah. That was, a, that was a great show. That was a really good show. That's the only reason I, I remember you, basically. is because I saw you on that River Zoom like a year later, and you were dressed up in the same outfit or the same hat. That's like the only quality I have these days. But it's a good Big one. Big River's quality. I'm notable. Yeah, no so, um, Drewski, just uh, tell me when you want me to start doing the uh, videos and stuff. All right, probably in about three minutes. Okay. Hello, friends. It took me a bit to post it on the subreddit because I'm not good at posting on Reddit. It's okay. But my glow-in-the-dark, I mean, neon yellow vinyl did come in the mail, which is the highlight. Of oh, that's so sick. I really want a vinyl. <laughs> I hopefully I can go. <laughs> it sounds so much nicer on vinyl. I don't know why, but it just felt right listening oh, to yeah. it. It just felt better. right. Like, okay, human was awesome while streaming it, but vinyl mm -hmm. on for Van Weezer just felt. I don't know. Sick. No, I mean, I'm, yeah. It has the uh, hidden tracks on there too. <laughs> Listen now to like. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, my mine was just a stupid comment. You had a, a real question. Oh, I was going to ask. So I don't have the vinyl. Is the Rick, I need some of that after the original. I need some of that or is it at the very end? It's at the very end after throwing oh, it all away. Interesting. Yeah, Single like verse and then oh. the chorus, I think. Huh. Yeah, like okay. there's right after throwing it all away, there's a, like this little bit of feedback and then it goes into just the Rick verse. Cool. Interesting. Yeah originally like in my brain when I planned it it was like I think I need some of that was supposed to be like track five or like side a technically and then it was going to go like that talking that you hear at the end of the original track then led into the feedback um yeah. to the Rick thing so it was right. like this super long one song and then go to yeah. side b that's cool okay. though okay I, I think Rivers at one point said that, uh, that like there was a clearance issue with the Rick um the rick verse or something Aww. like rick's estate wouldn't let them do it like I, really I, yeah i'm not sure because like 
it, it ended up being on the vinyl, but it's not on streaming or anything. Weird. River oh, said yeah, they're going to do a deluxe edition of this at one point, or is that's that? Cool. No. I mean, they, they did the box set thing. Should we get into it? <laughs> Let's get into it. Start with. Okay. Okay, let me uh, share my screen so we can get Hero up. The oh, great Hero. Uh, Drewski, you need to figure this out. It won't let me share my screen. <laughs> oh, I got to do this again. Okay, talk about Hero while I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about Hero then. Um, ah, I I had some. Oh yeah. Um, why why did uh, do we know why uh, Hero and End of the Game got swapped at all? Or I don't I I don't know. I actually like I'll show you guys later. I have this like funny like my like dream like track list that I made back in May. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure why they got swapped. Actually, hmm. did anyone okay. else hear anything? No, not really, because um, I remember up until like a month ago, all all the track lists we knew of had end of the game as the first the one. Top. Yeah, yeah, and then like once they started like announcing the track lists and stuff, um, Hero ended up being the the first track. It was weird. Weird. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if that was like a. Um, a river's decision or like a management decision or what i bet you it was about a, like a duo decision yeah probably okay so okay you know, now i can share my screen awesome i know eric so, was, but was anybody else here in the hero video oh i remember this was such a cool video when it came out though okay it was really cool yeah here we go, Hero. Uh oh, we can't hear it there. <laughs> is, <laughs> is you the audio not working? With audio, like we discussed earlier. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it it should should be happening. I'm sorry, this was very professional a few hours ago. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you okay. guys are fine. When I was a kid, I thought I'd save the world. Running around and chasing all the criminals. Swinging on a web, flying in the sky. Shooting lasers from my In life, not who I'm meant to be And I don't need the glory I don't need the fame And I don't want to wear Whoop. Wear this cape Cause on the inside I, I, that's, uh, that's one of the people from uh, Real Estate, I think That showed up in the video the I know it won't last Cast. Well, everybody needs a hero, but I'm not everybody else. I walk alone, yeah, I walk alone, yeah, I walk alone, yeah. You know, I try to be your hero, but I was lying to myself. I walk alone, yeah, I walk alone, yeah, I walk alone, yeah. They built Okay, so um, Drewski, you you didn't want to play the full clips, right? Or the full songs, but I mean, it's uh, up to you guys. I mean, it's up to yeah, you guys. I mean, oh. 
this is quite the Austin. This is quite the Austin song. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to keep going, we can. Drewski? Yeah, let's keep going. It seems like... Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Like, okay. Okay, so that was Hero. Cool. cool. Hero really was the hero in the beginning of the pandemic. Right, yeah. Um, but according to Rivers, I Need Some of That was planned to be released beforehand. Really? Wow. I didn't know that. But during the pandemic, I guess it's changed to Hero. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like Hero like is more, you know, better fits the, the pandemic. What month that, that came out in May? Wow. Yeah. Soon yeah. Be. That's, wow. That's a year ago now. Feels like just yesterday. It is over a year ago. <laughs> Jeez. Huh. Okay, so uh, you want me to go to the next song? Yeah, we can play just a little bit of all the good ones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She was thirsty, I was hungry for a star with somebody Who wouldn't break my heart like the last one, but this one She plays for all the marbles, her Nietzsche books are conversation starters And damn I think I loved her from the first sight I saw the light, the clouds opened up, rest in peace, good night All the good, good ones I just 
love the way she plays guitar with you guys down on the whimmy bar she'll be stuck on repeat repeating my head got me checking my pulse making sure i'm not dead oh yeah talks about all of the good ones is he referring to like the legends of 80s rock who are you know getting away from the scene as they get older that's, that's such a cool interpretation i've never that's even looked at it like that way but that's awesome fan interpretation i've heard i don't know about it that's else. really cool <laughs> uh one thing that I, I've been wondering about that song in particular is um, under the like the instrumental solo section, you can hear like a bunch of tracks of Rivers talking. Like, yeah. uh, what, what's he saying then? Um, one of them, he's talking about playing guitar. One of them is, a, I think, a math equation. Uh, <laughs> and then, do you remember, Charlie, what some other ones were? I think one of them might be me, maybe Brian too. Like Rivers one day just, just sent a bunch of, of vocals over and we kind of used it as this like inaudible. Um, later on, like if you guys want, I can like, you know, send an acapella or like play an acapella. Uh, maybe I don't have the files on me tonight, but another time. I yeah, that'd be awesome. With it. Could be cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Sweet. I think one of my favorite lines from that song is when Rivers says, we can play Family Feud as a reference <laughs> to the game you guys played. It's funny, yeah. Yeah. Months and months ago, actually. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Was that like a crazy experience being up there with the band? It was crazy because... Uh, they had all of us in like hair and makeup for an hour and a half or like two hours. And then they, they usher us into this really small room and they're like, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go up there and you're going to have fun. And then like we go and then they push us out on a stage essentially. And for like maybe 15 minutes total, we're on stage playing the game and then it's over. Um, it just wow. ha it happened so fast and it was so cool. Maybe it was like a half an hour, but it was, you know, it's a very fast pace because when you watch it, you know, there's commercials, there's I audience. And really it was like a quick game and they, and they film a bunch of episodes in one day, maybe like a half season almost, I would say. Wow. wow. Right. Yeah. I didn't know that's how they filmed Family Feud. <laughs> Me neither. But yeah, there was, I remember there, there was, there were two people before there are two groups before us filming and there were two right after us filming and by the time you know we got off stage and we're like in catering and it was um oh my gosh who did we who was on fallout boys team Seth green Seth. it was seth's birthday and we really like, yeah. had this big birthday like cake for him and um 
like by the time we were doing that, like there was already another group playing. It was a bit confusing. Wow. Was, like, no context as to why Seth Green was there. And everyone yeah, was I, that's so funny. Yeah, I think he's really good friends with Pete. And like, you know, both teams needed their, their plus one. That makes right, sense. yeah. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, that so was now... Eric's shining yeah. moment. Yeah, Eric's Eric's moment is Brian standing in the end of the game video. Watch out for the man in the hazmat suit. (laughs) (laughs) What, Drewski? Um, I was just saying, maybe we could like cut through the music video a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could. I could cut to the end with uh, Eric there. Eric, what, what was your experience filming that like? Cause it's really cool. You got to meet um, Brian during the shoot. Let's see. So we filmed out in Northridge, LA, or Northridge. Yeah, it's like North LA. Got there at like 7 a.m. So it was already tired. They just, you know, we were in this old abandoned house, just some lot. And we piled in one by one, and then eventually it's like, "Hey, go outside. You're gonna look like you're having look like you're having fun, and then just sit there." And then they picked off a shot doing that. They doing that, and that, and all that in the corner. You know, I saw like where I guess all the clients were from Crush. Um, I guess the director, you know, Video Village kind of stuff. I see, like, you got are you guys Weezer fans? I think it's Brian over there. <laughs> and I was like, I, I can't tell because I've never seen the guy in real life. And then, you know, about three hours past, uh, we were about to shoot the party scene. And then he, Brian, just comes out talking to everybody. I was like, oh shit, that's really Brian Bell. And um, I was too nervous to talk to him just because I'm a fan. And um, he was super cool. And eventually we talked. We talked about living, uh, you know, Knoxville together. Um, our local college football team, everything like that. And he was, um, seemed like an all around happy guy. I didn't ask him about anything just because I didn't know that Van, this was a T or a single for Van Weezer. Um, if I did, I would have asked him so much more. I would have asked him everything, but again, I was starstruck, but, um, I remember I, I, I got the video in the video due to Carl in the fan club. And it's like, hey, anyone wants to be in the video, email this lady. And then about halfway through the shoot, uh, one of the assistant directors came to him. He's like, hey, come talk, come with me. We're going to talk to the director real quick. Pulled me and another guy. He's like, hey, you guys kind of look like Brian. Do either of you guys want me to stand in for Brian? I was like, yeah. Like, I had much shorter hair. Like, my hair was probably half as short because I, I hadn't cut it in like six months so it was a lot shorter I was like I want me to stand for Brian and then um lo and behold 
They put me in that big orange hazmat suit for a total of about two hours. Oh my god! About a, I had about a I I had a heat stroke, and me and Brian are uh, yeah. well. You know, we only we I gave you know put my arm around him for you know for a picture, but we got um very intimate and just the fact that um I sweat sweated like hell in that suit, and then he put it on, so we are Ooh. intimately connected. <laughs> <laughs> in that regard he su- i suffer a lot more because i did it during the day and but he did it during the night so i'm jealous of him and that but um i'll talk about it forever but we got other we got to listen to uh i need some of that but all in all yeah, we an got- awesome experience don't forget, um don't forget to show us the tattoo oh yeah one of my friends in the fan club uh whoa for me yeah that's really cool yeah, um, and uh, yeah, all in all, awesome uh, experience to be part a part of uh, Weezer history, and just you know, be able to experience the end of the game a week before everybody else, except for you know people in the business. Wow! Yeah, that was That's a great. lot of fun. Yeah. That's so. It. That's awesome. Yeah. And Susie got her very own shout out. In the beginning, of the <laughs> uh, he uh, threw out beside Susie before. He, was it just other? Hey, girl. It was hey baby. Then it was hey Jimmy. And then maybe like eight other or more names. There was a list <laughs> of names. Right. Yeah. That's neat. Okay, so now we got. Uh, I need some of that. Another great Sweet. single. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll play a bit of this. And then uh, next in the playlist, I have the uh, Rick verse. Okay, yeah, that was that was some of that. And then uh, we have the Rick verse here too that um, unfortunately wasn't on the final song, but still still made it on the vinyl though.
if I'm correct, the song was resurrected from Yube, right? Correct. Yeah, everything, yeah. Um, that picture is so cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I love it. From the Undone uh, music video. Was working yeah, on this... um, uh, no, uh, you go ahead, Trisky. Oh. Well, working on this record, did you guys um, try and work in, um, like, inspirations from previous albums, like Blue and Ube? Or White? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, all of those, honestly. Um, and then, like, you know, th this song came from that era. Um, and I just thought, like, it was so good and then the fact that like you know it was originally about um a girl in a bikini right um mm. but then when you know and then I worked on the Scott and Rivers version a long time ago and that was you know in Japanese but then like this version I was like how can like if this doesn't come out like it might not ever come out and it was such a good song to me and seemed like you know we can like take a synth forward approach to like the 80s kind of um metal that was going on and and so we went for that in the song yeah, a few months yeah, back awesome. rivers released um a few thousand i believe demos demos yeah yeah are there any um specific demos that you you wanted to be reworked on the album but never got chosen yeah uh there's a song called charlie brand have you, <laughs> you guys know that one Charlie yeah, that one's great. Charlie Brown, you mean? Char oh my God, I just said Charlie Brand. He's right here. <laughs> Charlie, Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown, yeah. Oh, that's so I funny. That. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, there was Charlie Brown. I just thought those verses were so good and funny. And I was like, oh, we have to, but I would, it, the, the full group wasn't on board, but hopefully like, I think I could make that song really cool someday if it ever comes back around. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, that that specific demo is just wonderful. Right. I, I, I love it. Yeah, like the, the, the line about uh, Julius Caesar is so mm -hmm. good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, whose idea, if you know, whose idea was it for Pat to rip out the bang your head metal health drumming in the beginning? Um, I think that was River's idea because, you know, I mentioned this yesterday in a podcast, but like when we for every song, like for every song that we were like, all right, let's let's see if this works on the record. Like River's built a Spotify algorithm that would pull songs within a certain tempo that matched that was close to the tempo of our song that like had a chart position that w was in a specific genre, hair metal, metal, rock kind of of a certain decade um and that came up and it would be like oh that'd be so cool if, if we went for that kind of intro on the, on that song that's great yeah right I, yeah yeah because i i remember um i i think he's talked about it in interviews a couple of times because like that that was one of the songs that got him to like play guitar yeah so it's it's just awesome that that was able to be like brought back or brought into this that is, so, yeah, uh, yeah now we got uh beginning of the end which like i just this song is phenomenal it's it's so good the album it was like it, it's one of my favorites on the album because it's such like a roller coaster yeah i mean even the, yeah, like even the demos of it, like only a cockroach and like rock and roll cockroach. Oh, and so stuff. good. Those are, yeah, yeah, like the the stuff that um, Rivers was writing around that time was just amazing. I mean, he's still writing amazing stuff, but like that time yeah. period's just great. I think he was writing with um, Sean Everett a lot during that. Time. Yeah, yeah, I he um. I, I think like years and years ago he posted a video of him like recording uh cockroach and then like ballad of the briny which got turned into blue dream yep yep 
Yeah, so it, like just the the stuff that he did with um, Sean Everett back then was pretty neat. So good. I love Sean. He's so talented. Knocking on my door, they tell me it's time to go on. Last check in the mirror to see if anything's wrong. The writing's up on the wall, a warning shot to them all. It looks like this volcano's gone on My head is spinning. It's the beginning of the end. The people freak out when I walk out there. So great song so yeah that actually like i like found this like really dorky thing hold on this is very where is it in here so i made this like track list um i don't know if you guys it's like this and it was so funny and i put beginning of the end in like my like dream world track list beginning of the end was like the very first song um on the album because i was like what that would be a really, really cool intro. This kind of like apocalyptic, like, yeah. you know, you're driving in your car, you like look behind you, like, is are the police following me? Like, am I getting pulled over? And then right. it just like gets really, really big and chaotic. You hear the guitars distorting and crunching and then just like the smallest verse ever. Cassette and I was like, tape. what? The cassette tape. And then, and then like, you, and yeah, and we recorded that like through a four track, that whole verse and the first chorus is just pure tape. And I'm like, what's what's the smallest thing that we can record on, you know? And it's a cassette. A cassette. Um, so that that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember reading about. Uh, I, I think um, it was in Guitar Player magazine, like all the way all the way back in 2020, about how you you uh, ran that through the Tascam four track, which was yeah. really interesting to hear. 
so cool so fun and though you can hear like the, the voice everything's so warbly too oh yeah yeah i mean um uh, what what are like what, what's the order of like your oh, dream the order that i wrote down this is so yeah. funny this is from this is from um march 13th 2020 and it was in my brain it went beginning of the end end of the game sheila can do it hero i need some of that then i need some of that featuring rick right and then that would be side a and then the side b was all of the good ones um one more hit she needs me blue dream and then precious metal girl and then i wanted like in my i don't know i don't think this happened but like in my head i was like i want like three minutes 33 seconds of like silence or just like like some like kind of like empty thing where it's like only if you like let the record play and just like forget about it then throwing it all away came in comes in right on like on the vinyl it it there is like there's like two minutes of silence oh i love that yeah. i'm so excited it's, to hear the vinyl yeah it's it, it's great like the, um there's two minutes to silence then there's the feedback intro and then throwing it throwing it all away which oh that's so cool yeah yeah i mean and I, oh go ahead that's like, oh go ahead oh i know there's a lot of um questions about whether that that's um a sample at the end of the bridge from volunteer sorry say that question one more time um at the end of the beginning of the end bridge it's there appears to be a sample from volunteers. Oh, I'm not familiar. You mean the sudden and sudden and in the dirt right there? Yeah. 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 I actually I don't I don't know this the um is that a demo as volunteers? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I haven't heard it. Um, but it's not a really? sample. We totally re-recorded that. Oh, cool. Crazy, huh. right? Yeah, that's interesting because it, it does sound a lot like the original demo. That's cool. Wow. What's it called? Volunteers. Volunteers. You know that one? Mm-mm. Yeah, because like the <laughs> the chorus is like um 1500 volunteers wouldn't be in yeah. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, it's it's really neat. I, I think it was from around the same time as like um uh cockroach and then like the original version of blue dream wow drew if you have volunteers will you, will you email it to me later yeah i'll be sure to email that's cool it's like a really sweet song too Aww. but sad at the same time i do know i knew i know rock and roll cockroach i remember i thought i think i remember it being in, in there but i love that vocal because it like Reminds me of like cockroaches like scattering, uh, like when you like open yeah. the covers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. I remember when the the um, Bill and Ted single was released. It was I thought it was like this great song, but then I hear the album version. I'm like, this is so much better because it, it's like it feels so more much more apocalyptic. Totally. With all the sound effects totally bridge part yeah okay so now we have blue dream okay
such a great song. Okay. Yeah. I feel like this is one of those tracks that makes fans very curious how demos from years in years ago eventually get repurposed into new albums and get reworked into new songs. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I remember like when I first like was asked like JD when he first asked if I if I'd be down to work on the album, he mentioned um this song and only a cockroach. He was like they're pretty cool. Um so that's that's how, you know, and those are the two songs he did with Sean or he had started with Sean, so you know, they're they're so kind of very rock to me and band as opposed to like pop yeah yeah so yeah that's where that came from i mean what what i've been wondering is like how far along did the um crazy train interpolation come in okay so originally it was the original arrangement of the song and i can't remember if it was from rivers were you on the album? I don't think that you were working with us in Charlie, but if it was a Rivers or or Crush or but some it was it was pretty early on. It was pretty early on because I remember like we hadn't tracked the real drums to it and we were over at United and Pat came in and played to it with Rivers. Pat and Rivers played at the same time. Um, which was really, really cool in this like big giant room and they were like facing each other. But I think yeah like when maybe when we were building the demo it was just the normal arrangement of the song and then we and then we went from there i remember like so, someone was like hey what if we try what if we tried this what if we interpolated um crazy train like you know how, how crazy would that be and and we tried it and it just kind of stopped hmm. cool is that like i it, it's it's just such a interesting connection to, to draw between this and like the original song. Yeah, yeah. It's like, really... I, I mean, specifically in the verses, I, I think it, re- it works super good. Yeah, it's cool. And I remember like, even like, you know, Jake Sinclair is like my mentor and like one of my best friends. And like, he, you know, was, was helping me out like, you know, I would send him stuff all the time and he was like what if you know like it's it's filtered kind of in, in the verses and I was like yeah that's that's sick and it kind of like waves up and down and and stuff like that right yeah that's awesome it's it's cool to hear that uh Jake put in some input on this it's, it's neat oh yeah he, he's we're, we're we're very close and you know I love him look up to him Cool. So now we got uh, one more hit, which I think is such a phenomenal <laughs> song. Thanks. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember um, hearing. I, I think it was like w- when you were um, when you were talking with Rivers. Um, like uh, it was like one of his island in the Zoom things from like early last year. And, and you said that there was a section on here that was like inspired by Slayer. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was wondering like, how, how is that gonna sound? And like, <laughs> turns out that it, it's just amazing. It's great. Yeah, it came out really sick.
Such a cool. great song. One of my personal favorites from this record. Same. It seems like such a callback to older songs like Hash Pipe and American Gigolo. Yeah. It got some Pinkerton vibes too. It does have some Pinkerton vibes. Scott does a Pinkerton bass riff in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it it's just phenomenal. I, I I don't know what to say, honestly. Yeah, it's really it's really cool, and like the song is sick. Oh no, you're fine. You can play it, but it's it's really cool. Like the, the song is so kind of dark to me, but like just, just you know. It's a good one. I feel like yeah. everybody was surprised when they first heard that breakdown. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> hope so. Not having Weezer go heavy on guitars for quite a bit is like, yeah. you missed that old song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we got uh, Sheila Can Do It. An absolute Love classic. Yeah. song from Sweet. written around the same time as The Good Life and Across the Sea. Wow. So good. Yeah. I mean, it just I I really like um, this uh, version of the song because it's it, it's more similar to the um, I, I, I think uh, it was in the demos that Rivers was selling um last year it was like a rehearsal version and it had the um if i feel my heart is getting watered down part um like before it was a bridge but then he um made it like a kind of pre-chorus part it's pretty yeah neat. it's really cool and i love how that like harmony only comes in on the third one mm -hmm. um and the pistachio lyric. I remember when we were, we were working on this with Michael Beinhorn and he, you know, he's very like, picks apart everything kind of in a good way in like a challenging way. And Charlie just reminded me on, on this song, he said, who is Sheila? And what is- What is the thing that she does? What is the thing that she does? <laughs> Can you answer this question for me? And I was like, no, I can't. Was this song, so was this song from like Pinkerton era originally? It was from 90, does anyone yeah, know? It's, Wait, it's from 96. That band rehearsal thing? Right, yeah. it, when's that band rehearsal from? From like homie time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's like one of the only homie rehearsals that Rivers has released. And I, I think he, um, I, I think he took it down because it had um, like the other members of homie on it. Wow. Uh, yeah, but um, 
super super interesting stuff and it's really like, cool uh, to hear another um you know classic metalhead song intro because this one has girls 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 by motley totally yeah. <laughs> we actually we got like you know i think the tour is part in partnership with harley davidson i want to say i make i might be making that up but they like sent us like they went out and recorded uh motorcycle sounds and like and sent them to us to use so great. yeah right yeah that's, that's and awesome i also learned um, recently that uh just motorcycle trivia is that uh in van halen hot for teacher that like drum thing is like a motorcycle wow idling really um, yeah. Huh. Weird, like, uh, yeah. Drum thing. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, it's neat. <laughs> now we got uh she needs me. She needs me. In this big bad world, there's things I do When she needs help, I come through Sometimes she hands me a jar of jiff And I feel good when I open it Yeah, I mean, that, that's song. a, yeah. Cool. Feels like um, Sheila and She Needs Me definitely are inspired by the classic Weezer sound. Mm-hmm. And I know, I remember that that solo was very inspired by, like, ACDC. Especially and then what else? Being the first Weezer song to feature cowbell. Yeah, <laughs> there's cowbell <laughs> Yeah. And I remember that the end of that song, that weird outro, it's just, that's, I think that's all feedback guitars, like kind of reversed and messed up. Oh. That's cool. And I want to say like this, it's it, when you're playing it just now, and I totally blacked this out of my memory, but like, I think that's also the four track in the verses. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds horribly. Neat. Uh, I, I really like the addition of like the, the little scream after the <laughs> River Sings Horror Show. Yeah. It's great. It's fun. 
There's also uh, yeah. a few cool fan interpretations of that song. Yeah. Yeah, like what? I mean, d- uh, there was one I read. They were like, um, they were like, uh, they were thinking about how there are a lot of 80s songs that are kind of like, like possessive and a little uh-huh. like misogynistic. But like, this is like that type of song, but coming from the point of view of like a, a dad or like a like boring husband or something. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's it 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 just really interesting how like people can just like, but, uh, like you can just like interpret something like it, like you can get all these different interpretations of the same song. It's great. It's what it's so yeah, it's, it's the best. Yeah, now we're now we got uh, the a kind of closer here, like the, the closer kind of before the, the yeah. yeah, the pre closer <laughs> closer. Exactly. Yeah, this has got to be one of the the sweetest songs the band's ever released. <laughs> I don't invest in stocks, I don't invest in bonds Who needs real estate when I got you? You're my platinum blonde with your spandex on My pot of gold at the rainbow room When the neon lights stop shining I see you like a silver With the patches on the back You're my precious metal girl Mm. All the kings and queens When they explored the seas They were searching for a gem like you The battles lost and won With the L.A. guns For the Aquanet in your hairdo When the neon lights stop shining I see you like a silver lining You're my precious metal girl My best friend in the world Look like you could have been in fast The pussycat in your jacket with the patches on the back you're my precious metal girl i don't need to mind as long as you're mine the sun sets on sunset but you still shine you still shine cause you're my precious metal girl my best friend in the world Look like you could have been in faster pussy cat In your leather jacket with the patches on the back You're my precious metal girl love that song amazing quote very reminiscent yeah. of songs like endless bummer and oh girlfriend yep butterfly yeah it's just really really nice and such a unique way to end a metal album as well right it's kind of like the total opposite within the lyrics the lyrics kind of put right there have been people saying that there was a uh, electric version recorded. I don't think so. Maybe, hmm. maybe, but I, I don't think there was. I even think like the demo is just acoustic guitar and a vocal. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, 
I don't know where that rumor came from then. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Sometimes maybe, things just... Maybe it happened in like a rehearsal or something, you know? No. Yeah. It's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> fake news. Yeah. Okay, and now we got the just the wow it's online yeah oh, the sick. amazing song that is throwing it all away um we unfortunately it didn't work out this week but we were gonna have a cool surprise oh yeah gonna, what was the surprise it might happen a different time but jason was gonna come and play the song because he wow, this that's song. cool that's really cool and he's such a big fan of the demo it's so good. Yeah. Well, maybe a another time. Yeah, uh, like e ever since I, I heard the demo of that, it's just, what, the, the song's just incredible. It's so good. And it was like classic, like, you know, the songs aren't about love, but like when I first heard it, you know, I, I assumed it was, I was like, oh, it sounds like a breakup song. And then I like look at the lyrics closely and I'm, or we're, we're, we're recording it and working on it. And it's like, 
this is about when I moved out of my parents, you know, like you don't, you don't even heat my room. now the air vent and I was like it's so <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> um and so I, yeah, it's really special yeah it's like a and like uh, what really struck me when I when I heard the re-recorded version is just like you got like the blue sound like the blue guitar tone so good like yeah how, how did yeah. how did you do that yeah oh it's you know it's you know uh, every Every song on the album, we use that that Mesa boogie. It's it's like the Mark II head, um, and every song, and that it's just like dialing it in, and like also that song, you know, it kind of like plays itself in a way, um, and yeah, I don't even think there were like pedals or anything on that. I think it's we just re- just yeah, the amp. Rarely use pedals. Wow. Either. It's rivers playing, but also yeah, that that Mesa boogie has that like blue Pinkerton sound, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's incredible. It's just incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really cool. I think you know. I looked. I opened up the session yesterday, and um, for the for the po- uh, podcast, and it was Pat. Pat, Pat played drums and then it was Pat on the left guitar, Rivers on the right. Rivers doing those high kind of leads too over it. It was really cool. It was a good mix of the guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, it's awesome that you used part of the original demo in there. Yeah, just that very, very end and the very, very, I looked at it, the very, very beginning. And like right. the drums fade out and go into the, the new drums, like within the first kind of bar. Yeah, yeah. It like cool. just like the the blend between the new recording and the old one, it just works so perfectly. Yeah. It's a good song. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh Drewski, you got anything else to say about it about this or You doing you here or oh Hello. he's muted now. Oh yeah. no. Oh let's see if I can contact him on here. Oh his mic died. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Okay, so um yeah, I I, I guess I gotta <laughs> <laughs> do this myself then um yeah so just uh, like listening through all this was wonderful i mean um just like everything about the album it's great and i mean um one thing that i wanted to say is that your your work with rivers um on his vocals it, like it's it's great like i i know that you worked as the uh, vocal engineer on uh, OK Human, right? Totally, yeah. Yeah, because I just, the vocals on that are great too. I mean, you're, you're super talented. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been, um, we've been working for a while together. I want to say kind of since, yeah, since a white album on vocals. And then like, I think we have a really good repertoire and a, or a really good like pattern and, and vibe in the studio and can like really get like, I can get, we can get really good stuff out of each other and we feel really comfortable and um, creative. So thank All you right. so much. And yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, and then like uh, I, I, I think just today, Rivers mentioned. Um, I, I think he was talking about seasons, the next project, huh. and he, he said um, he he was uh, gonna get you as the vocal producer, then uh, Jake as the big picture kind of producer. Oh, that. that's awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. So, um, 
back to Van Weezer a bit. Um, what what were your favorites on the album? My favorites were Beginning of the End, One More Hit, Thrown All Away, End of the Game. Those are my like, and like, and I think the top two for me was ended up being Beginning of the End and uh, and uh, and uh, One More Hit. Right. Yeah. Um, I love uh, the end of the game. I, that's the only one I didn't work on, but <laughs> I, I do love that song. Uh, um, yeah, of course, uh, throwing it all away was crazy just because of the time period of that song and a huge Weezer fan. So it was like really surreal to get to work on something like that. Um, one more hit I, I love, but there's lots of cool like guitar stuff in there if you like really listen to it it's like channeling some Pinkerton stuff which I think is awesome um yeah I love it I'm so proud of this album yeah that's great um oh we got we got a question for uh Charlie here um it's uh do you think your work on Van Weezer could influence your own music and then um, it'd be cool to hear a miniature tiger's heroism esque song. Heroism, like the yeah, song I, "Hero." I, I'm not oh. sure if they mean he hero specifically or just like um, like guitar, like very um, guitar oh, solo, yeah. like guitar heroism type huh? stuff. That's cool. Um, yeah, I uh, like I started writing songs because of Pinkerton. So like a lot of my early songs sound like bad Weezer ripoffs. <laughs> um, so like it's definitely found its way in there. And I I'm working on a song now that has some like Weezer guitar tones that was definitely um, influenced by spending so much time cranking the uh, Mesa Boogie up and getting those like Weezer guitars. But yeah, I mean, yeah. always, always inspired by Weezer. It's a huge band, and I was so grateful to work on this with Susie. Right. I mean, I, I'm sure they they just like have such a history and like influence on like I, I'm sure everyone here is is like um, if they make music, they're super influenced by Weezer. Of course. Totally. It's great. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're back on now. Sorry yeah. What up, Drew? Um. Yeah, you got any more questions? Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, um, do you guys have any, like, fun memories or favorite moments from, like, working on the album? Oh, there's so many. Um, there was, like, this one moment that I've never, like, talked about out loud. I don't know if you were here, but I was working with Rivers, and we were working out of 4th Street, and, like, the studio got infested with flies, like I'm talking like a hundred flies in this tiny control room, but we had to keep working because we were like on a deadline and like we're looking everywhere for the flies and Riv Rivers was leaving for the day and he's like, I know how to get rid of them. And he turns off the lights in the studio and I'm just sitting in like pure pit because there's no windows in the studio and I'm sitting in pure like pitch black room with flies now flying everywhere because they're not flying to like the ceiling lights and then he left yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like he just walked he just walked out of the studio and I'm like in like complete silence complete darkness <laughs> all these flies and then poor Scott came in you know he drives um from the east side of town and um it's like an hour drive in traffic 
and he walks in and there's just like flies everywhere <laughs> and he looks at me and he's like Susie I'm not ever I'm not coming to the studio again like we're, we have to work on the east side when we do my parts and there's like flies in his food I think a fly flew into like his soup at one point it was oh god cool. it was metal. <laughs> so many flies that was like a funny a funny moment a funny day that's interesting. Do you have any memories, Charlie? <laughs> the guy <laughs> story is really funny. Yeah, I don't know if that's like appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's another one? Huh. Um, There's so many. I mean, yeah, just like <laughs> like watching these guys record. It's like not specific, but I don't know. Like, well, I guess like as an engineer, like I got to play all their gear and like set up you know drums and do stuff and yeah just to play all that weezer gear was like <laughs> crazy like it'd be like rivers you know strat with all the stickers and stuff like yeah. all all the the gear was so cool to like be around yeah right i i did see um the picture on your instagram of you holding like that one of his like um strats with all the stickers on it yeah great yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I'm sure it was wonderful to work with the guys. Oh, yeah. They're all such great dudes. Uh, and how do you guys feel now that it's finally released to everybody? It feels so good. It felt like, you know, like everything like felt like really quiet and like I, I was really excited about it. And like now that it's out, it's it's really it's really cool and I'm I'm proud of it. Um I love it. I love the album. I love the band and Rivers and Weezer and I'm really it makes me really excited to make more music and work on more stuff. Like like I just feel like, you know, we first started that album I probably like three years ago and I just feel like I've learned so much and grown so much and, and so has everyone else and I'm excited to do more. Yeah, that's great. And with OK Human as well, I believe it was, wasn't it Rivers who had mentioned that All My Favorite Songs was originally in contention for Van Weezer? I know. And I was so excited for it. Yeah, I was sad. I was so excited. So yeah, I was, was sad. Really um, Is there really like cool. an electric recording out there? No, there might be the demo might have an electric guitar on it. I don't, I can't remember. I think maybe it does. Mm. It was like acoustic. Was it acoustic? Yeah, it was like acoustic kind of doing the riff and stuff. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's interesting how sometimes you get songs that just like, they just don't work out or they just like work in one style. Or, or work in both styles in this case. I don't know. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, a great song will work in any style, you know, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. It's really neat. Okay. Uh, Drewski, you got anything else? Or, um, I think. We're good. Are you guys good? Cool. You got anything else you'd like to say? Any shout outs? Honorable mentions? <laughs> um, no, thank you guys so much for having us. And and yeah, I you know, I love Weezer. I love Weezer and, and I'm I make I'm so excited that this is out and I'm so excited to make more music um, with them if they'll have have us and yeah it's been a wild ride and you guys have been awesome and thanks for being cool and um and having us on tonight yeah yeah i mean this was great yeah, thank, thank you, you for guys. being here yeah yeah of course of course <laughs> thank all all three of you charlie Susie, and jack and <laughs> jack yeah, sure. jack gained some quarantine week wait in the past month um he's, he's real thick right now but mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay, so. Cool, guys. Yeah, see ya. This was, <laughs> it was, this was great. This was so fun. I always have a blast with you guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, well, have a nice night. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank Thanks for hanging. Thank you. Good night. Bye. <laughs>